in thyroidectomy there is rose position or barking dog position so here you can see patient is supine semi fowler position with neck in extension what kind of incision cocker's incision or cervical collar incision 1 cm below cricoid cartilage after that subcutaneous flaps are raised to expose platysma after that we have to dissect the platysma so that platysmal flaps are raised superiorly till thyroid cartilage inferiorly till suprasternal notch laterally till sternocleidomastoid muscle then you can see in the center here you can see there is raphe raphe so the raphe is incised and strap muscles are retracted laterally now you can see the thyroid shortest structure here this is middle thyroid vein it is ligated to prevent the avulsion and air embolism next you can see this nerve external branch of superior laryngeal so superior thyroid artery and vein it's ligated close to thyroid to prevent injury of external branch of superior laryngeal similarly inferior thyroid artery and vein is again ligated close to prevent vascular infarction of parathyroid why because parathyroid gland it is supplied by parathyroid artery which is an end artery you can see thyroid is rolled see the relation here you can see trachea these are parathyroid right and here there is recurrent laryngeal nerve this is ligament of berry so in this area if bleeding is there you don't use cautery control it with pressure so ligament of berry it is divided after that what we do we are going to divide the isthmus from the center and it is separated from anterior aspect of trachea similarly it's done on opposite side so strap muscles are approximated and sutured after that you can see platysma this is also approximated and sutured and after that skin is approximated and sutured and we have to put closed suction drain after that that is rumo drain clear so this is how thyroidectomy is done